another another reason I don't trust Mark Signorelli and Isaiah Salvador is because um, they're busy hanging out in these streets with Prophet Lovi and Marcus Rogers, and I don't get what that's about. So it's stuff like that, like fellowship with people that don't make sense. Like they're obviously like in the earlier parts I made mention of how it is that once you have identified somebody as obviously a false prophet, as people who are sutured to the Lord Jesus Christ, you have got no business at all uh, um, encircling yourself with people that have been obviously called out, you know, truthfully called out as unbelievers. You know, the, the best way to rescue a false shepherd for Jesus is to avoid him as true servants of the living God, the conglomerate of us that are truly um, redeemed. If we avoid them, they might just feel all ostracized and icy cold out there in the wilderness, looked at by nothing but other false shepherds and the world of lost human beings, that they might actually want to join the true body of Christ and so repent. So the best way to deal with a man, for instance, like Marcus Rogers, is by just kind of like literally shutting him out. Awesome. If you want to belong to us, you better start getting with right doctrine first and foremost. And secondly, admit that you have made a woman an adulteress. It's that basic. Like you've got these like things that you have done on top of that. You went on right ahead and, and, and uh, acknowledged who's this rando um, that obviously has nothing to do with Jesus. T.D. Jakes. How in the world are you going to go apologize to T.D. Jakes? Like, no, on the day you apologize to T.D. Jakes, I'm not even trying to take prisoners with you. So unless you come back and you repent and le leave that woman, go and pay for her bond, her rent, her children that you put in her stomach but put her separately somewhere else and admit that you literally went and brought a woman into adultery and now she's your baby mama but she ain't your wife unless you do that you ain't got no kingdom no business being in the kingdom of heaven trying to act as if you're one of us you're not you're not there are ways to fix your thingy ma bobbies that you're doing out here in these streets there are ways but in order for you to be recovered restored um you know there's a lot of loss involved like jacob you're gonna end up with a limp or something uh but if you don't want the limp then i guess bye like bye is that bit like bye like no nah. you don't get to hover around us as believers what like everybody knows td jakes is a charlatan so if you're busy endorsing him what is he paying for your church what's that Hey, Marcus Rogers. Hey, you can't be a child or you can't be a preacher. That ship sailed long ago because a pastor is supposed to be a husband of one wife um, uh, above reproach and all that jazz. You are not. So at this point, all you can do in the body of Christ is be an evangelist. Go on the street corner and preach. Give the gospel, but you don't get to pastor an actual church. Like, literally, that ship has sailed. That ship has sailed because all of these women that you married make you, like, disqualified. So, I, Bani, like, you get my point. This is not even about Marcus Rogers, but I am just trying to make a point. I'm trying to make a point like strictness is very very important in the body of christ otherwise it's going to be so much compromise wheat among tares we get that we grow among them but if at all we've got wisdom to be able to discern the difference between wheat and tares we have no business then as wheat continuing to fellowship with tares like they are wheat what we do in the presence of tares is try to evangelize them making it clear that they're lukewarm they're laodicean or they're sardian and if they won't embrace that dust your feet off walk away don't fellowship with them don't bring them into your church don't um come together with them in a workshop for deliverance just because you are all celebrity like deliverance ministers with over 600,000 subscribers on YouTube. And so therefore you have a workshop where one dude that is obviously a heretic is in that particular meeting. Like the, the, the one deliverance workshop that they did where there was Mark Signal, really this Vlad dude. I don't know his surname. I forgot it. Right. Um, Le, uh, Isaiah Salvador, I believe he was there. Marcus Rogers and Prophet Lovi. I was like, okay, so Prophet Lovi is obviously operating in the same spirit that Bushiri is operating in. So when they're busy claiming to be delivering people from demons with Prophet Lovi in the room, what in the world, Mark Signorelli, where in the world, Mark, was your Holy Spirit in being able to discern that you are literally next to a Satanist? You are next to a sorcerer in the church, while in and of yourself, you have not signed your soul over to that kind of covenant. And you are trying to cast out devils out of people in this particular deliverance workshop. Are you not being counteracted by whatever is inside Prophet Lovi? You cannot have Obushiri in the same room as Ras Dizdar and Ras be believable. You, you just can't. You can't, guys. So then if there is a successful workshop to cast out demons that runs from morning all the way up until evening, where Prophet Lovi has his own section, and so too does Mark Signorelli have his own section, were people delivered or were people more infested with demons on that day? Because we know for a fact that Prophet Lovi is not of God. It is obvious in the worst way. These people are compromising because they are making themselves celebrities instead of Christians. It's that basic. So while I am rooting for Mark, because I, I, frankly I like him, I really do. I feel as if the deliverance ministers need to wake up and smell the coffee because they belong to a segment of Christianity that is the most infiltrated by the devil and here it is that we've got a woman now she is bound in chains literally trying to latch on to the toe of a christian who has got way too much on her plate because she is infested with demons in a country that does not have enough deliverance 
ministers that are trustworthy because one woman is busy calling Bushiri Papa Dada and following him all the way to Malawi even though he's got a criminal case pending here in South Africa. That, that's what's going on actually in these streets. That's what's happening. So I think that's kind of to me now. I'm only one person and again I will say oh, well, I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. I've got limitations. Y'all, this is the last, these are the last days. The, ch the church will be scattered because of a whole bunch of false shepherds. So if at all you decide to go and dabble with witchcraft, practice a spell that you got taught how to do on YouTube. If that's what you're going to be out here in these streets trying and do, no one understand then that the likelihood of you finding a deliverance minister in these last days where the church is so apostate is slim to none, meaning you're going to have to self-deliver, meaning that you are going to have to really, truly trust in Jesus to to help you conquer whatever it is that throws you on the floor the moment the Holy Spirit enters the room. You're going to have to go to God and grovel and beg, beg as a prodigal to deliver you even though you don't have anybody to help you along in your deliverance. This is the last days. It's the great apostasy. You can't be affording to be practicing no witchcraft. You can't be bringing no demons into your body. The body of Christ is scantily clad. There are few and far between of us. We are nowhere to be found in each other's periphery. You drive for kilometers upon kilometers upon kilometers upon kilometers to find no church at all that is sound in the wisdom of the Lord. And you are just dabbling with witchcraft. You can't afford to do any of that. And since you did, you're gonna have to self-deliver in your apartment. Your television was too loud. You are sorry. I'm sorry, girl. I'm not for you. This is not for you. The narcissist as well. Another thing that I wanted to highlight is that they uh, if you allow them to come into your life what they do then is cause everybody else around you to second guess you. You who are the empath, the, the person who has to diminish themselves in order that other people might become big because that's how God makes his disciples. You, thanks to that diminished nature that you naturally walk in because God gave you that for a second nature, you will very easily be trampled underfoot in the shadow of this narcissist that will keep on hurting you over and over and over and over and over again in order to try and make it look as if though you're the one here that's crazy. Crazy. I had a, a vision of this girl, this woman, saying, literally sitting where she was sitting, looking at me, doing this, doing this, basically saying, Okay, look, I guess I'm going to graduate now to exactly what it is, or rather be demoted to what it is that her family members are walking in trying to claim that she's crazy, even though her faculties are clearly intact. So since everybody else is trying to come against me, she's going to use the same narrative that has been attacking me for years. That's the same thing that I told that American guy. When I busted his witchcraft and I told him over email that I was aware, after enough emails, he denied it. He denied it and told me that um, I, I need to go and check my, 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 my noodles. If at all, they're still intact. I was like the audacity. You came into my life knowing how much I was persecuted by my family who tried to claim that I am crazy um, for knowing what it is that they've done against me. And now here it is that you're doing exactly the same things as they are doing and you are supporting the very people that you claimed to support me against when you initially came into my space and you're trying to come back into my life you are trying to reinvest yourself into my life with a narrative that i am crazy and need psychiatric help yeah so i had a dream where this woman was basically saying of me that i'm crazy for knowing that she's a witch that's not a person that wants deliverance that is a person that is walking in a very hard knock deep psychosis she is sol and frankly needs to be soothed by the playing of david's harp and i'm not about that business i am not about to do it i refuse I absolutely refuse. So that's why with narcissists or rather these people that are indwelled by this class of demons that are so rich with pride, you have to just cut them off and pray for them that they might find God themselves and perhaps like what I'm doing, give them, you know, a couple of uh, counsels, like one or two people that you can lead them to, to listen to um, online to self-deliver, like rescue yourselves. Like you people that are busy dabbling with witchcraft in the last days, aguna masonto. in the church. People are busy ta -ta -ta -sha -sha -sha, with tongues that you don't even know are demonic or godly. You don't know what's going on in there. It's a circus. It's a circus. It's a circus. And you're busy dabbling when you, the dabbling of which puts you in a position to be so badly indwelt by demonic spirits that you need strong men, like literally people who are the incredible Hulk, a whole bunch of uh, uh, Dwayne Johnsons to hold you down. The way you're so demon possessed that you might have demons cast out of you. Where are you going to find the rock in your neighborhood that's going to be also Christian, happy to basically sit with you for 5, 10, 20 days while you vomit out all the darkness of the occult out of your body how many of y'all know a whole bunch of strong guys by jimang that are going to sit you out suffer you while you manifest devils as they pray for you if anything if you can find one all the if you can find just one dwayne johnson that's godly that is a deliverance minister by all means but this is south africa when you when you find a person that claims to be in god they're busy trying to make money using the gospel using the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ as a means for financial gain. They're making money. They, they've got careers. This is a business, a Fortune 500 company for them. It is not a church. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an empire. That's what they are running. Empires. 
and these empires of theirs cause people to fall on the floor rolling around with kundalini spurts. That's all you got. So if you want to be more demon possessed, I'm going to be a little bit Malawi. Or you go to Zimbabwe. Go to the angel. I'm going for the crime that he committed. Go to Al Jazeera as he was exposed. Balad. Balad. Mulad. Mbogo. Lele. Kimang. Mbomo kwe. Na bomboro. Bo zondo. They keep on getting exposed in the news. Maga somehow they still own churches. Go. Go to them. Amba. Banning. I want to be happy to go make people manifest spirits all over the show. Having signed their souls. Having been initiated by Unana Kwa. Aku bonsa mi lapaya e lo koko koko akra koko gana zama ulo mulata pasta e initiate dilo eng e filo eng the occult powers that look like prophetic powers by nana kwaku ambiom land because you are very barely going to find true gospel ministers up in this monster in South Africa baling here pinja fella to ride out about you went and swallowed demons for an entire decade. And now you don't know how to get delivered. Nothing is impossible for God. But as for me, Pumagi, you are a narcissist. It's, oh, you're my mom in the worst way. You're my sisters in the worst way. You're my cousins. You're just these people that will never admit what you've done because it's embarrassing. So you're going to come all up in my grill and patronize the living delights out of me until I just accept that what I, 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 I was seeing things with me. Me. I was seeing things. I will never get to that point. I'm sorry, Harry, but I've always been smart, very perceptive. As a kid growing up, I will never ever get to a point where I will admit that me, I was seeing things. I've always been very level-headed, sober. All my life, it only got worse when I came to Christ. Nobody will ever get to a point where they will convince me I was seeing things. I was delusional. I was hallucinating. What? No, I've been sober. I've been sober. Don't come into my life and try and finish off what it is that my family started because you will be blown out like the bed bad wolf. You will be blown away, blown away by the power of the Holy Spirit. So allow this to be counsel to you out there who is suffering from narcissistic personality disorder, like demon possessed because you decided to become a witch overnight. Allow this to be counseled to self-deliver and beg the Lord to get you out of this nonsense. But please do not bother Ambazalwan. Stop. Because you call yourself a Christian. You are patronizing to the body of Christ. You cause the world to think Christians are not jack. You cause the world to blaspheme the name of God because of your conduct as one who professes Jesus Christ. You are a practicing witch inside the body of Christ. And you also cause Christians a lot of sorrow and pain because of the friendship you award them with only to rip it out of their hands because you're playing games. You are easily, um, uh, what do you call this thing? Uh, a marionette on the strings of the devil. So you are very heartbreaking to the Christian. And on top of that, you're narcissistic. So your propensity, your susceptibility, your, your, the, the susceptibility of your person to true repentance is very low. You, don't, you, you catch demons like the flu. You catch demons like it's the proper flu. And the gospel is to you like broccoli and collard greens to a seven-year-old. It's hard for you to eat it. It's so hard. You you literally pick your peas apart on your plate until your mom shoves it down your throat. You cannot embrace the Lord because you are too inward focused. You are narcissistic and all your life you've been using people. And from what the Lord showed me, you were ultimately going to get to a point where you try you would try to use me for the resources that I have that you lack. Like my car. Like my car. Knowing how sweet and kind I am and how I would highly unlikely say no to a friend because goodness gracious, I'm not using it most and she needs to go to work every day. No, I'm sorry. I'm not doing it. Use it being used has been for me one of the biggest banes of my existence throughout the sorrow of my soul in all of these years that I've been in this persecution because my family has gone on right ahead to use my resources my resources and then pretend like I did not help them along nobody's gonna get to do that to me over and over again I am being targeted by people that are solidified in some stony hardness do you understand in the devil and they, they are such faithful servants to the kingdom of darkness that even when they encounter the power of God in a true Christian, they're not interested in repenting. So, I mean, I, I don't know what can be done for you other than to write, uh, to, to basically categorize you as a camel that is in dire need of being like put through the eye of a needle. That's all I can say you are. Only God can do that with you because it is impossible with man. There are certain people that just cannot be reached by man. And we know that this is true even in the scriptures because God had to go and get Saul himself on the road to Damascus. It was a direct, like, what do you call this thing? Uh, snatching. It's like the Lord got out of heaven or went down a staircase to directly get Saul because no Christian was going to successfully evangelize Saul. So if the Lord will have that kind of mercy on you, that he will meet you on the road to Damascus, then hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord. You might just write the epistles of um, the, the tribulation testament then. You might just end up writing some pretty in, like informative literature for tribulation saints. I don't know, since that's where you're going. 
and Darcy and make like Saul and be very inspirational and indeed apostolic in a way that God will ordain and not for you to make a decision one day to wake up like Moses or no and call yourself a prophet, an apostle, sorry. Yeah, maybe you might just on that day become that thing. But uh, Saul on the road to Damascus are few and far between occurrences. If anything, I know of a few souls that are on the road to Damascus right now and they're all in the Middle East. Muslims that are getting fished by God directly in dreams and visions because their land is so unevangelized thanks to Christian persecution that God has to directly go for them. So since you're in South Africa and the gospel is being freely preached here, I just feel as if you're not going to get the Saul on the road to Damascus experience. You're not going to get it. All you have is Karabo. Just like the rich man was told in Hellfire that his brothers have got Moses and the prophets. All you got is me. All you got is your Bible. You live in a country. I was watching a video the other day that really made me tear up uh, by the two preachers where these two preachers were showing these Chinese um, underground church uh, people being given Bibles and how they cried and kissed the Bibles and jumped up and down on the spot because their country has made Bibles illegal. Real Bibles, not the communistic one that says that Jesus was a sinner. Yeah, that's what's good. And they were jumping, kissing this Bible. Yeah, that, 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 that is what under heaven it is that you have in comparison with, that you have to deal with at the Great White Throne Judgment when God is saying to you, you had a whole thick Bible while there were Chinese Christians in the underground church in China struggling to understand the Word of God or even struggling to study the Word of God because they didn't have their own Bibles. And then ones were delivered from them underground, like smuggled in, smuggled in. Do you understand? And they jumped up and down on the spot like a little kitty that has just been taken to Disneyland. Mm, that's what's good. Marawana, you had like an ESV, an NIV, a KJV, an NKJV, an NASB, a, a, like goodness gracious, even like the New World Translation because you can't tell the difference between the Jehovah's Witness Bible and the Christian versions. You got all these Bibles hanging out in your house and they, they've got highlights in them. You've written in some of them in pen. You have taken notes. Yeah, because you, you call yourself a Bible scholar, Marawaloi, when there are true Christians in China that have to rely on the words of a preacher because they don't have access to the Bible. And you having Moses and the prophets are out in these streets trying to enter heaven. How in the world am I supposed to justify letting you in when next to your fluffy Christianity in a country where it was easy to be a Christian, you chose witchcraft over and above it? Depart from me, work of iniquity, I never knew you. Literally, you've got the Bible, you've got God, self-deliver. There are Christians across the world that have it a lot harsher. Uh, persecuted Christians in North Korea, in the underground church, in prison camps. I've been in my Bible, they just have the word of God, however few scriptures it is that they understand and they're holding on to that. And you can't hold on to Jesus in a cushy apartment, in being a middle income woman with a nine to five job in Johannesburg with five Bibles in your house, including a Jehovah's Witness Bible because you don't know the difference. My goodness. Whoa. And you expect that God is not going to harshly like ransack? you i'm sorry this is your comeuppance you don't get to worm your way slither into my space i don't even know why under heaven you put witchcraft on me a person with whom i was fellowshipping for so long having expressed my distaste against witchcraft and you claimed to not belong to the kingdom of darkness and then you bewitched me and when your witchcraft clearly was not working you then wanted to come back i don't want no soul putting a dagger in my heart this is the end of the road for you and me if anything it was the end of the road on the day you decided to put witchcraft on me to test if and all my spiritual gift actually works that was the end of the road but i mean you could not see that coming because you thought you could just deceive me because you're the narcissist that you are well narcissistic personality disorder is um the, the the rich man really frankly it is impossible for you to enter heaven but for god let him meet you halfway on the road to your proverbial damascus and have him ask you why do you persecute me and then get born again then maybe you might make it in the sky go in the rapture i don't know but right now just like peter i will not embrace you oh Saul, since you were busy persecuting christians to a point of stoning stephen to death and like this you're carrying the clothes of stephen as he's being killed over there by the pharisees like you don't get to just rock up in the life of christians or some hello after persecuting them there's gotta be some kind of angelic visitation to calm peter down to let him know that it's safe like you can take this dude in because he's no longer the the, the 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 wretched rando that he was before now he actually belongs to us and his charge his call is to go and reach the gentiles so maybe your job is to like i don't know help tribulation saints along since at this point you appear to be very very obviously about to miss the rapture like oh, we're not doing this I'm sorry. I didn't even intend to speak for this long. Get 140 saying 2 a.m. I dinner. But I'm going to go and eat dinner now because I've gotten this off my chest. I did those uh, small little videos where I was trying to be jocose about it. Of, you know, the moon and the like singing that I did. But this is not a matter to just sing over on some don't come back into my life. It had to be e e e exposited. It had to be exposited. It had to be expanded on. Like a depth. How in the world did I close? Uh, Second Peter. 
we're gonna go back there just now yeah no this matter had to be exposited you're not gonna make me feel like I, I was going crazy i was seeing things and cause me to be awkward i would be the one that, that's awkward imagine that guys imagine that like she's the one that's supposed to be awkward but if i ended up being like oh maybe i was just seeing things what you might as well throw my entire spiritual gift out the, out the window i would second guess and doubt everything everything that god has shown me because one person rocked up and succeeded to make me feel as if though none given i didn't talk i was hallucinating really making like a m m these shrooms make me hallucinate gotta think about losing weight no we're not doing it <laughs> that song just came to me i actually do need to lose weight no i'm not doing where are we uh it was second peter towards the end mm -mm. Uh, yeah, well, that was first Peter that was opening second Peter towards the end. So, uh, this is how your judgment is going to be if you don't repent, if you don't give your life uh, to the Lord truly and stop acting like a charlatan with your narcissistic personality, just order gas, lighting the living daylights out of me, causing me, uh, my whole ecosystem to undermine me based on me apparently being crazy and then causing also me to second guess God as to why he embarrassed me so much by causing me to misjudge an innocent woman. You're not innocent. This is you. But for False prophets also, oh my eyes, but false prophets also arose among the people just as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their sensuality and because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. Exactly what I've been speaking about. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Are you listening to me? Everything I've just explained above. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle and their destruction is not asleep. Be afraid. Be very afraid. This is like Judas vibes where it was prophesied about him to deceit, to, to betray the son of man. When your condemnation is already written about long ago, is it even worth my while to read this to you right now? But then again, I got hope that maybe even though you might be Saul by name, you're rather Saul on the road to Damascus because at the end of the day, we still got a hope for souls. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Their condemnation from long ago is not uh, idle and their destruction, my eyes, what's going on? Um, and their destruction is not asleep. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell. I spoke about that briefly earlier and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. If he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah. Okay. And uh, sorry, a herald of righteousness with seven others when he brought a flood upon the world um, of the ungodly. I'm sorry, guys, my eyes every so often, especially at night, um, there's like this not i don't know look my eyes just give me issues like i have issues with sight at night especially at night so that's what's going on right now so i'm struggling even to read right now because everything is going blurry on the page as i go along it's been like that since i was like 20 like four okay he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly if by turning the cities of sodom and gomorrah to ashes he condemned them to extinction making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly and if he rescued the righteous lot greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked for as the that righteous man lived among them day after day he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds that he saw and heard exactly then the lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials amen exactly and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment like i just feel as if though at this point be afraid be very afraid and especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passion and despise authority bold and willful they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones like it's just it's the worst for me it's the worst the fact that they're not scared like, i don't know why this woman is not scared to hurt me after we have had such lengthy conversations about this very matter there is no fear of god in them at all there is no fear of god there is no um come up and expected no fear of god charging angels concerning his children as it is written in psalm 91 because they thoroughly don't think it's a thing or maybe they think they're covered like it is written in in romans 2 that um as roman it's written in romans 2 that they uh what do you call this they 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 think that god's forbearance and long suffering and patience is for them to just continue to sin when god makes it clear that rather it's for them to repent there's no fear of god like no fear of god the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling power and despise authority bold and willful they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones whereas angels though greater in might and power do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the lord okay this is very similar to that uh, uh scripture in the book of jude where um god speaks about these very same whitewashed tombs as ones who uh, speak against uh, celestial beings 
um, as like did nothing. Like you know, the Satan when the, rather the archangel Michael said, "Satan, the Lord rebuke you." When there was argument over the body of Moses, this is a similar parallel par passage. That's why I am such an advocate for interpreting scripture with scripture, like just basic hermeneutics, because this will enable you to understand just exactly what you're up against, so as to stop using the Bible as a pamphlet, reading only just like one or two portions of it, and then imagining that you've been edified now, you've been said the sinner's prayer, so you're good to go. When you don't study, you will never be shown a proof because it is indeed study that shows a person approved okay um you're gonna have to go check that uh word out in the book of jude i'm not gonna read it because i, I want to go eat now and it's late and power do not pronounce sorry bold and willful they do not they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones whereas angels though greater in might and power do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the lord but these like irrational animals creatures of instinct born to be caught and destroyed you know guys like heh, it's funny because i did a, a, a short little three minute video where i was basically depicting such human beings as the one that I'm, I'm speaking about right now as animals that even though they might show themselves as human beings ultimately they reveal an animal all up in your grill and then this this passage comes at me and therefore confirming that this is just um the very ways in which they 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 walk they function like irrational animals and so it is not for me to be slanderous to speak of wishes as animals because they literally operate like things that are grunting in basic instinct eat 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 sex 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 mate 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 this this like they, they just want to fulfill their passions and do nothing else just as it is written of um two timothy three rando type society of the last days they are lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god so they're always just feeding their passions their god is their belly they glory and shame and given that that's a thing they literally function like animals i'm hungry so i'm gonna eat i need to use the bathroom so i'm gonna urinate on the spot i'm gonna defecate on the spot i need a baby so i'm just gonna mate and put one in your baby and you're in your belly and move on they they do spells like those i uh, give me a baby give me uh, sex give me uh, a job give me meat give me this get like give, give me give me, give me. <laughs> like grunt animals fulfilling their passions i want money i want a house so i'm gonna do whatever it takes slay people in the spirit and defend on the floor throwing demons at them because i'm an occult pastor grant grant <laughs> it's all they do eat 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 sex 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 mate 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 animals but these like irrational animals creatures of instinct born to be caught and destroyed blaspheming about matters of which they are arrogant and ignorant will also be destroyed in their destruction suffering wrong as the wage of their wrongdoing they counted pleasure to revel in the daytime literally without shame this is also similarly parallel applicable to the word of god where uh, he speaks about um if you suffer for doing good like suffering i think it's first peter 4 if you suffer for being a christian and you do good but don't suffer as being a meddler or a wrongdoer or as a murderer um because uh, then i don't know you had it coming or something and judgment begins with the church of god if the righteous are scarcely saved what then of the ungodly and the sinner that would be in first peter i believe 4 right if not you know where it's at go look for it google right here god also speaks of uh, through the writer which i believe is peter second peter uh it speaks here that they are suffering wrong as the wage of their wrongdoing. So they're suffering for doing evil, for being meddlers, false preachers, murderers. You had it coming. They counted pleasure to revel in the daytime. If you see the boasts and the rants of uh, Mboro in South Africa, you would die. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their deceptions while they feast with you. Exactly. This woman is trying to feast with me. The dude from the USA tried to feast with me. Hanging out with a Christian as whitewashed tombs. When I'm to his out here thinking, finally I found fellowship after a season of loneliness. And then you bewitch me. Goodness gracious, come on, man. But like you knew I, I understand witchcraft. I see it and I can't stand it. And you still do it to me? In Leo, it's a demon, man. Demons. Legions. How in the world do you just ignore that? I, anyway... There are blots and blemishes reveling in their deceptions while they feast with you. They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. Exactly. That's why you need to further, like, um, suture yourself in the word of God. Ground yourself in the scripture. Study to show yourself approved. Be bereaved, and then in that way, they're not going to get to you. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed. By a Yuzana. Accursed children. Forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor. Goodness gracious. I keep saying Balaam's error, Balaam's error. I keep raising it. Balaam is that dude that trained, that taught Balak to cause the children of God to eat food sacrificed to idols and uh, to practice sexual immorality so they can be curseable. I keep speaking against people like these. People who rock up in the child, in the body of Christ, in order to make them compromise so they can be cursed. So long story short, they can be unsteady. 
their prerogative, their primary prerogative, their usefulness in the kingdom of darkness as vessels of dishonor is precisely in order that they might cause Christians to stumble, in order to cause the Philadelphian church to give their crown away. And that's why God says to the Philadelphian church, see that nobody steals your crown. So the devil is therefore going to try to steal it because he is the stealer, the killer, the destroyer, the thief, the, the killer, the destroyer, John 10, 10. So these guys are infiltrated into the lives of the body of Christ. Precisely that they might be like thieves, the thieves that they are. They are used, unfortunately. We war not against flesh and blood. Mara, willingly so, some of them are in that state because they know that what they do is wicked. That their unrighteous works deserve punishment. But not only do they continue to do with them, as it is written in Romans 1, but they also encourage others to partake in those deeds. So they are knowingly doing what they're doing as well as ignorantly doing it. They are without excuse. Uh, they have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed, accursed children. Forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing, but was rebuked for his own by, the, by his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with human voice and restrained the prophet's mouth madness these are waterless springs and mists driven by a storm for them the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved this is so paralleled easily with jude the book of jude like all of it for them the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved for speaking loud boasts of folly they entice by sensual passions of the flesh those who are barely escaping from those who live in error the, i mean goodness is that is this is that not the description of me i'm literally barely making it i'm barely making it from those who are living in error people who have persecuted me have put me in a position to barely survive and these people infiltrate into the lives of people like me to try and finish them off yes if the bible does not give you goosebumps guys i don't know what will i really don't know what will for speaking loud boasts of folly they entice by sensual passions of the flesh those who are barely escaping from those who live in error they promise them freedom but they themselves are slaves of corruption just like that american man rocked up promising me the world the moon and the stars but in and of himself, he was a slave. And so too was this woman trying to infiltrate into my life because she, oh, that's another thing that God wanted me to show me about her. She wants to take credit for my release, my redemption. Or what the orchestrator, some kind of uh, deliverance for me that is not from God. They try to give themselves accolades for work they have not done. When the Lord has given his servants good works and advanced to walk in them, they try to steal all that credit for themselves. They are exploiters. For speaking loud boasts of folly, they entice by sensual passions of the flesh those who are barely escaping from those living in error. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. I mean, this also sounds very much like these fake preachers of all prophet Lovi and whatnot. For whatever overcomes a person, to that um, he is enslaved. For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. Yo, guys, the last date is worse than the first. These people who keep on professing Jesus Christ, it's, it's, it's so scary. It is also similar to what's written in, I believe, in the book of Hebrews where God says that it is impossible for somebody who has tasted the things of God to come, the things of the age to come. For these people to go back to their sin and for them to be forgiven because um, they are crucifying the Son of Man twice. And this is being spoken of again in this passage. Listen, for if after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first. Yes, like it. For it would have been better for them to never have known the way of righteousness than, oh guys, I spoke about this earlier when I was using the example with the Muslim and how it is that um, if at all he repents, he is judgeable by the church. But if he does not repent, I have no business judging him. Um, uh, I'm speaking to the Muslim, but the person who claims themselves a Christian, they're judgeable. And so therefore, they're worse off even than the Muslims who don't give their lives to Jesus, who are not interested at all. Their state is worse than the first. They would have been better off staying atheists or Muslims than if they professed Christianity and then walked in the way of folly and got entangled in the way of sin. I spoke about this earlier and now it is here in um, communicated again in the book of Second Peter. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. So sad. What the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit and the soul after washing herself returns to wallow in the mire. Like, yo, guys, as in the word of God, and that makes me tremble. I get goosebumps. I don't know how anybody can have multiple versions of this word chilling on their shelves and even on their Bible apps and their cell phones and still walk around in so much folly. Like, I just, I don't know. It's scary. 
It is, as, oh, Batung, it is a scary thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It is a frightful, frightful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I don't know why people do not get overcome by the fear of God when they read his word. It's because they don't believe. They have itching ears. They will not love the truth. They have taken pleasure in their unrighteousness. They have gathered for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what their itching ears want to hear. They would much rather run with the lie than believe the truth because the truth exposes their scandalous, wicked state. And because they don't want to believe that they're ugly from birth, did their parents conceive them in death? They would much rather run with this false, fluffy, wannabe doctrine out there of demons that's roaming these streets in these last days in the grand apostasy. I, I feel sorry for this woman and I feel sorry for everybody that is like her, but this is my two cents to them. This is my pennies to them. This is what I am trying to do for such a conglomerate as that, to basically uh, breathe the, the, the fear of God into their souls, that they might turn from their wicked ways and repent. All I can do for that woman is give her this. I was tempted to just run with the the the, the falling in a little skits the comedic with me singing only but when i was taking a shower i felt very deeply burdened to basically come and have a chat chat and it lasted all of these parts long so i think i'm even gonna upload this particular chat only after my 48 part series because frankly i'm sick and tired of having holes in between my 48 part series because it's almost ready so i will put this at the very end um and give this woman to stew basically time she has to stew she just has to stew like stew with me ignoring her email and then ultimately she will be communicated to because i feel as if though if i spoke about this and shared this content now she might just be raw with anger and envy and all different kinds of insanity to listen maybe if she's allowed to just be maybe if i allow her to be ignored and not be heard and just not say anything for maybe like a week or two it'll just stew and stew and she'll be so flat and worn out by just being ignored that ultimately when i say something about it she might be in a position to receive the word with humility because currently she is pompous she's arrogant she's trying to slide back into my life with that janice and jambri's vibe worming her way into the life of a weak world woman like burdened with passions except i'm not that girl like she's done this before it's it's not her first rodeo like she has done this before to people and she has gotten away with it so she's gonna feel entitled and i'm sick and tired of dealing with witchcraft she is going to feel entitled to my to me receiving her back into my life just like that american man and when i don't do it and i am afraid that she's going to end up dying so let it stew i will share this content last or maybe i'll share it first no it's fine okay fine i'll share it first i'll share it first stew for what for who ain't nobody trying to do stew right now kiwing actually we are trying to do stew but i don't want to do this particular stew now i'm gonna share it before my 48 uh part series so look out for the 48 part series after this i promise it will be what i upload um after this i gotta upload it i've changed my mind there we go this is not like a person being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine it's a person that is walking in indecision and has made a decision to rather be a decider i won't let it stew guys i'm signing out in christ's name i adore you please i hope you've been edified by this as for the narcissists of this world jesus is the only way you are unreachable by human souls but hey what's impossible with god is impossible with man so on this day you're a camel that's what's good you're a camel narcissist you're a camel oh camel you're an animal Alice the camel had one hump. Alice the camel had five humps. Alice the camel had four humps. Alice, the, yeah, proper. You're a, you're a camel. Alice the camel had five humps. Alice the camel had five humps. Alice the camel had five humps. So go, Alice, go. Bum bum bum. Alice the camel had four humps. Alice the camel had four humps. Alice the camel had four humps. So go, Alice, go. Bum bum bum. Alice the camel had three humps. Alice the camel had three humps. Alice the camel had three humps. So ca go, Alice, go. Bum bum bum. Alice the camel had two humps. Alice the camel had two humps. Alice the camel had two humps. So go, Alice, go. Bum bum bum. Alice the camel had one hump. Alice the camel had one hump. Alice the camel had one hump. So go, Alice, go. Bum bum bum. Alice the camel had no humps. Alice the camel had no humps. Alice the camel had no humps. Now Alice is a horse. <laughs> Now you gotta be a horse gallop. Yeah, that's what's good because it, it does nothing for you to be a camel in the wilderness storing water in your hump without Jesus. So you're better off just being a horse. Is that basic? And I thought I'd bread at that. So Alice, be a horse. Boom, boom, boom. Right now you're just a camel and you need to be put through the eye of a needle. Um, And only God can do that. But I can't do that for you, Alice, because currently you've got five humps and you are insufferable in my grill. I'm standing out in Christ's name, Alice. Cranky. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs>